This video is taken from my course on how to create a hybrid casual mobile game. More info in the description. All right, guys, welcome back. In this lesson, we are finally going to implement our inventory manager. So let's jump right into it. Why wait anymore? So let's open our scripts folder, inventory, right click and create an inventory manager. Perfect. All right, so this script will inherit from the mono behavior class. So what we can do is right away create a game object that will hold that class. So let's call it inventory manager. Perfect. Let's actually reset the transform. And same thing again, just for organization purposes, I'm going to create a new category. So let's call it managers. Perfect. Drop our inventory manager inside of it. Okay, duplicate the empty game object. Let's rename it. Okay, so the corn is not relevant anymore. Let's remove it. And finally, let's attach our inventory manager to that object. Perfect. So Mr. Inventory Manager, what are we going to do with you? Okay, so the first thing I want to do is create a private variable for our inventory. So inventory, perfect. We now have the inventory. But of course it's null. So let's instantiate it first, but next we will load the data and so on. So at start, let's just say inventory equals new inventory. Okay, so we've got our inventory and it's not null anymore. So what we can do in the start method, we are going to subscribe to the crop tile dot on crop harvested event or action and call an action let's and call a method. Let's call it crop harvested callback. Okay, so let's not forget to unsubscribe from it in the on destroy method first, like so. Okay, perfect. Let's now create our method, pass in the crop type. Okay, perfect. Cool. We can actually remove our update method. No, we don't need it for now. And I think that we, do, we won't need it actually. <laughs> so that's okay. All right, so when we've harvested a crop, what do we want to do? We first want to grab the inventory and call the crop harvested callback by passing in the crop type, as simple as it gets. So now we can give it a try. Next, we will save the data and so on. But for now, let's keep things simple. OK, so let's grab the let's test this. So we should actually call the this debug line. OK, so let's go back to Unity. OK, let's try and hit play. Select our crop field, so water, try and harvest. Okay, we've harvested everything from the first time. So cool. Corn has been harvested nine times. So we have nine calls to this debug line. Perfect. Working as expected. Nice. So we now have an, a working inventory. We just need to implement it, actually. <laughs> so yeah, let's do that. Okay, so let's remove let's remove this debug line. Perfect. And let's start thinking about this. So whenever we harvest a crop, we definitely want to add it to our items list right here, right? But imagine that we already have, let's say, nine corn crops, nine corn items in our inventory. We are not going to create a new inventory item element. Got it? We actually first need to check if we've already have if we already have an inventory item which has the crop type corn, okay? And if that's the case, we will add one or increment the amount of items that we've got. So this amount value right here. I hope this is clear. I'm going to try and explain again step by step, okay? So first off, we are going to create a boolean. Let's call it crop found, okay? And let's initialize it to false. So this will help us track if we've found a crop or not. And if we did not found that crop in the inventory items, then we will create it. OK, perfect. So let's now create a loop and we will loop through all of our items like so. So for each item, we can actually store it. So inventory item item equals items I. So this is not compulsory. It's taking more memory because we are actually allowing allocating memory for our inventory items. So that's not optimum, but it's better for understanding. After that, you can directly use the items I and so on. Okay. 
All right, so we've got, we've got our item right here. We wanna check if the item.crop type equals the crop type of the crop we've just harvested, okay? If that's the case, we are gonna grab the item, okay? And grab the amount value of that item, increment it, perfect. So you can either increment it or add two or add five or add six or seven, anything you want. So for now, we are just gonna increment it. So that's your choice again. And after incrementing it, we are, we are gonna grab the crop found Boolean and set it to true because we've found the crop. That's perfect. And we can actually also exit the loop because we've done everything we wanted to do. After the loop, we can check if we've found the crop or not. So if we've found the crop, we can just return and exit the method. Otherwise, if we haven't found the crop, we need to create a new item in the list. So let's add a comment. So create a new item in the list with that crop type. Okay, perfect. So we will simply write items.add. So we are grabbing our list right here and adding a new element, new inventory item. Okay, so let's pass in the crop type. And for the amount, let's initialize it to one because right here we've incremented it. We've only added one, so let's initialize it to one. Perfect. So next time we collect the same crop or harvest the same crop, this crop found will actually be true and we will actually found, find it. Crop found will be true and we won't create the item in the list anymore, okay? So let's create a quick method right here. So let's say public void debug inventory, okay? Just to debug our inventory anytime we've collected a crop. So for, okay, so, so let's loop through our items. So instead of creating a full loop, I'm gonna create a for each loop. So for each inventory item, item in our list, so in items, what we wanna do is debug.log, we have um, the amount, so item.amount, um, let's say crops or items in our, let's pass in now the crop type, okay, list, perfect, nice. So again, that's not the optimal way of making strings, because we are adding and adding many strings. You can use a string builder, but for simplicity's sake, come on, we need to make things work first and then improve, okay? So let's remove our curly brackets. Okay, perfect. Now we can just call the debug inventory method, okay? Debug inventory. We can actually make it private for now because we are not calling it from anywhere, anywhere else, okay? And we should be good. So let's give it a shot. All right, let's hit play. Okay, let's sew the tiles, water the tiles, and harvest the tiles. Okay, so we have one item in our corn list. That's not good. And we only have one debug call right here. Okay, what's wrong? Nothing is wrong. It's just the fact that we actually debug whenever we create the crop type right here. So we should actually debug whenever we collect a crop. So let's say somewhere around here. Yep, should be good. So let's give it a shot. Okay, so let's hit play. Okay, let's sow, water and harvest. Nice, here we go. We have nine items in our corn list. So let's now try and sow again, water and harvest. Okay, 14, 18, perfect. Now it's working really well. That feels good. When everything works, that feels really good. Okay, so now if I quit and come back, let's sow, water, harvest, and everything gets reset. So I have only nine items in our corn list again. Next, we will actually learn how to save and load our data using JSON. So we've actually used the player preferences before, right? Did we? I think we didn't, so... For those of you who don't know how to use the player preferences, huh, we didn't, okay, that's okay, because we will use the player preferences to store the coin amount. 
And the only purpose of that will be to show you different ways of saving and loading your data, okay? So yeah, let's jump right in the next lesson and learn how to use JSON.